Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you for coming back to my channel and for watching The Juice. This is volume four. It's my fourth tournament of the year. It's kind of hard to believe that I've already fished four tournaments. I really don't feel like I've gotten into the bulk of my season yet. But uh, here we are, volume four. Just got back from Florida, went down there for the Hobie Bass Open Series uh, satellite event, which is just a one day tournament uh, located around the country. And this particular one was on the Harris chain. Uh, check it out. I'll throw up a, a map of the area so you can see where I'm talking about. You know, so I was looking for a little bit cooler water on Lake Harris, so I went to the Double Run area, which is the far southern end. Uh, and there's actually quite a bit of water flowing in on that southern end. So that was kind of my game plan was to go find a little bit cooler water and just see if I could make something happen. I caught a bunch of little males, uh, a lot of small fish, but uh, nothing, nothing of any substantial size that would help you win a tournament. So... Didn't really pan out. I got ninth place in the tournament. There wasn't that many anglers, uh, 22 or something like that. So it wasn't particularly great, but I had a great time. Shane Williams ran that tournament. Uh, Ron Champion was there. Jason Broach, of course, won the tournament. Uh, so it's good to see all those guys. I had a buddy of mine that was actually down there from Kentucky. Aaron Music was down there. Uh, you know, always good to see Matthew Van and Trent Steege, and I know I'm leaving a few guys out, but uh, had a great time down there. If you can at all make it to one of these satellite events, if you can't make a bigger Hobie event, you should definitely uh, check out their schedule, and I'll, I'll have the link to the schedule in the description. You know, the pattern was, was definitely post-spawn. Uh, you know, I was throwing a topwater frog, I was throwing Texas rig Cinco, uh, targeting isolated lily pads, boat docks and cypress trees that was pretty much my game uh, anywhere i found a big expanse of lily pads i, I really didn't do that good uh, the way i caught a lot of my fish was on little pockets of lily pads lots of fry i mean tons and tons of fry um, a lot of little butt bass up guarding beds you'd see beds up along the bank that were just empty not a big one but uh you know when it's friday and everybody else is working and you're down in florida catching you know two pounders makes for a fun day caught him on a cinco you know fishing grass not much better than a cinco let's get another one on this little deal here i, I don't know what happened uh this little guy decided he was gonna bite my cinco and i guess i thought he was a 12 pounder uh, and I just flat jerked his face off. So shout out to the little guy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to uh, um, Be so forceful with you um, Maybe you'll grow up and, and we can do it again sometime <laughs> Dude, that... <laughs> Oh my God. I jerked that little fish's soul out. And I still got him too. <laughs> oh my God. That was ridiculous.
<laughs> How cool was that? You know, if you've been watching for a while, you know that I don't like to uh, keep too many things a secret. I'm going to be an open book and tell you guys exactly what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and, and you know what I'm using and all that stuff. So, I just wanted to give that kind of a breakdown. Uh, my primary deal um, was the Texas rig, um, and I'm throwing that on the G Loomis NRX uh, 852 um, jig and worm rod. It's a fantastic rod. Um, it's super sensitive, but uh, I'm just using a 3 16 piece of tungsten, a glass bead, a mustad, a 4 aught hook, a uh, EWG worm hook from mustad, and uh, you know, I was throwing a, a watermelon trick worm, and I was also throwing a, um, a Senko. I was just kind of interchanging it. Uh, it kind of seemed like the brighter the sun, maybe a little bit tighter to cover they were holding. Uh, and for whatever reason, the, the trick worm really, I feel like I got more bites on the trick worm. I don't know if it's a little bit more uh, finesse of a presentation. Uh, but while I was down there, I was throwing it on 20 pound sunline uh, just because of the lily pads and all the vegetation. And you really just never know when you're going to hook into that big one. Um, was throwing it on a Corrado, uh, 7.4 to 1 uh, ratio reel. Uh, and th this was kind of my workhorse. I mean, this is what I caught probably 90% of my fish on down there. Fantastic setup for, for throwing uh, jigs and soft plastics for sure. As always, with all of my soft plastics, uh, I always use JB's fish sauce on my soft plastics. Uh, sometimes I use the bait fish. Sometimes I use the crawfish. Um, this time I was using the crawfish. This is kind of my favorite. It's my go-to. Uh, it smells really good or bad depending on what your opinion of that is. I think it smells pretty good. The bass seem to like it. Uh, but definitely get you some JB's fish sauce and start putting that on your soft plastics. And I'm not saying that you're going to get more bites with it, although I do, I do think I get more bites. Um, but the bites that you get, those fish, once they taste that oil, uh, they're going to hold on to it for a little bit longer. And sometimes, especially with highly pressured fish, that's what you need is you just need that split second longer to feel the bite kind of have that register in your brain so you can set the hook on them uh, those bass are pretty good at pulling in a bait and blowing it back out before you ever realize that you had a bite so if there's something that you can use like this uh, to, to make them hold on to it just a little bit longer I kind of think you'd be crazy not to so go check out JB's fish sauce there's a link in the description uh, if you're interested in that my other thing that I was doing primarily was uh, I was throwing a frog. I mean, it's Florida. It's post-spawn. That's kind of what you're supposed to do. Um, throwing my frog on the G. Loomis uh, IMX Pro Frog Rod. It's a, a rod specifically designed to throw a frog. It's a 7 foot 4 rod, uh, and it can handle up to a 1 ounce frog. Um, I'm using 65 pound braid, uh, Power Pro braid on there. It's that moss green color braid. Uh, and I've got this on a on an 8.5 to 1 ratio Corrado. Um, something that I've learned over the years, and it, honestly it took me a long time to learn this. Um, if you're going to frog fish, you need a high speed reel. <clears throat> you know, I, I got lucky a few times, especially last year in Wisconsin. Um, I was using a slow reel. And those frogs, you know, those bass would eat those frogs. And yeah, you get a good hook set and all that, but it's so slow to wind it out of the lily pads or the grass and what happens is the more time you let that fish sit in those lily pads or the grass they're going to get buried down in that stuff and it's just going to be harder to get them out uh, and you run a much higher chance of losing them there'll be links to all this stuff that i used during the tournament uh, everything will be in the description so if you're curious as to what i was using uh, i've got everything listed out there and you can go check all that stuff out so once the tournament was over, uh, you know, I got ninth place and uh, I was outside the money. I didn't get qualified for TOC, uh, but that's okay. It, it was an awesome time. But, you know, the next day I had, I had a good 12-hour drive home back to Kentucky. So I figured I'd at least get my money's worth while I was there. I had about three to four hours left to fish. So I went back out after the tournament. Uh, and I was pretty determined just to get on a frog bite that evening. I really, really wanted to get some topwater uh, action. I haven't had any all year. So, um, yeah, so I went back out. Me and my buddy Aaron Music went back out. 
we launched at a different spot because obviously where we were at earlier in the day wasn't really panning out. Uh, so we launched at a little different spot on Big Harris and check it out for yourself. A couple nice fish on a frog. Make the drive down here worth it. That's what it All right, guys, that kind of wraps it up for the Juice Volume 4. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little alarm bell and come on back next time because we're going to do it again uh, here in like a week. I'm going to Gunnersville, so we're going to do it again for Gunnersville. I'm giving away a Yeti uh, Roadie 20. It's, it's going to be full of as much swag that, that I can possibly get inside of that thing. And just to say thank you, you guys helped me get over the 1,000 mark. I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. So just to say thank you, if you're subscribed to my channel, I'm going to pick somebody at random and you're going to win that cooler uh, logo. Make sure you hit subscribe, share it out if you like what I'm doing, and uh, make sure to leave some comments down there and, and, and just uh, let me know what you think.